We are joined today by Dr. Umar Saif. Umar is many things, an entrepreneur, a former founding vice chancellor of the Information Technology University in Pakistan, a former chairman of the Punjab Information Technology Board, also in Pakistan. And I'm going to ask him what he thinks the future of e-commerce in developing countries might look like in a post-COVID world. I believe COVID will have profound impact on, uh, on how, we, uh, how we consume content, entertainment online, how people educate themselves, how they work, uh, how they buy things, everything will change. And more so in the developing world because we can leapfrog. Uh, now in the developing world, as you know, a lot of structures that otherwise would have inertia uh, uh, impeding some of this uh, doesn't exist. So in, in, in the developing world, there's very little digital payment. So therefore there's no existing payment infrastructure that is stopping the developing world from entirely signing up onto their own digital payment options. M-Pesa in Africa is a great example. And there are such examples now all over the world. Paytm is another example in India where these countries, countries have almost invented their own ways to conduct business online. In this case, not connected to internet or debit cards or credit cards, but mobile phones and mobile wallets, which have become their mode for doing business. Uh, likewise, uh, in, 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 in e-commerce, because there wasn't much going on in the developing world largely, therefore COVID has sort of ushered in this sort of new model of combining retail offline as well as online. So for instance, the more exciting models like the one in Thailand that has emerged, which is that you go online, place an order for something, and the closest shop actually delivers it to you. So it isn't Amazon or eBay, it is your local retail shops converting into an e-commerce model. Uh, similarly, education. Now in the developed world, the big large universities, their schools and education and all of that, in the developing world, uh, you know, we've struggled with this. Uh, higher education, uh, the quality of higher education has always been a challenge because most countries lo lose the best of their minds to, you know, the universities that have best grad programs like the one that you're in. Uh, and therefore, you know, they always struggle with high quality uh, research oriented or so higher education. But now that can be addressed. There's edX, there's Coursera, there's Udacity, uh, but also there's Baijus and, uh, and the Salman Academy and so on and so forth. And, and all these models have opened up sort of almost a new avenue in the developing world to get connected uh, to these sort of uh, high quality pre canned content or education models uh, that the developed world has been experimenting with for a long time. Post COVID, this new norm would bring in this almost a, uh, almost a forced uh, a move to a time where uh, education, entertainment, commerce would become a flat world. Uh, it would uh, it would it uh, it would equalize uh, you know opportunity education entertainment e-commerce even employment uh, livelihood uh, throughout the world. As someone who's been a senior policymaker on digital readiness, how do you think this plays out in a developing country? For example, in Pakistan. Pakistan is a is a country that you would ordinarily not associate uh, with a radical leapfrog into the digital world where uh, you know uh, retail becomes e-commerce and education becomes online education and entertainment becomes Netflix. You know that's not the expectation you have from a country like Pakistan. But here are some numbers for you. There are 161 million cellular users. 87 percent of the households in Pakistan have a cell phone. Uh, so they have the means uh, to consume content, to learn, to do business. There are 70 million internet users in Pakistan. It's the 14th largest uh, uh, number of users uh, in the world. Uh, but just to put that in perspective, the 70 million internet users in Pakistan is more than the entire population of France, Italy, and the United Kingdom. And it's not just these people who have internet connectivity, they're very tech savvy, they're using it, let's say for using it on Twitter or Instagram or Facebook, and just the number of active social media users in Pakistan is more than 40 million people. That's more than the entire population of Canada, just to put that in perspective. But a little known fact about Pakistan is that about 40% of Pakistan's population would be categorized as a middle class, would be classified as middle class compared to only 25% in India. In fact, that's the 18th largest middle class in the world and bigger than the entire population 
of Germany. That's where I see growth. Therefore, in a country like Pakistan, this will certainly change the way people conduct business in a country like Pakistan. People get themselves connected to the international workforce through platforms like Upwork and, and, and Elance and Fiverr.com and Amazon Mechanical Turk because if they're doing work from home uh, or maintaining a ledger from home uh, for their employer in Pakistan or India, they could be doing the same uh, for an employer in the US. Uh, it, you know, it, it's the same skill. If they're doing medical transcriptions for a hospital in Pakistan from home, they could be doing medical transcriptions uh, for, for a hospital in the US. So this really opens up you know, uh, the, the labor market, you know, this market for skills, uh, makes this uh, accessible to everyone. So I think how people uh, work, educate themselves, entertain themselves, how people buy things uh, would all change in the developing world. And that reality is set in and that, uh, that shift has already happened.